called it. Um, and a lot of the time you kind of heard from sort of people who are involved in community activism, many people who are around the Labour Party, and sometimes you'd even hear it from the sort of upper layers of the, the Labour Party, and uh, sometimes they'd say we'd like to have something like what they have in Scandinavia or whatever. Um, and then if you talk to kind of sort of ordinary people on the streets, um, people, if you ask them, like, well, okay, what do you think the Swedish model is? And then people will say things, some people think, say they think it's socialism, some people would say it's about free, free health care, free creches, um, gender equality, free education, and sort of harmony and equality and a sort of classless society um, and those kind of things. So, so that's what most people would sort of think of uh, when you talk about the, the Swedish welfare state. So I'll just give you some of the, the real facts about Sweden first. Um, I can tell you that the richest 1% in Sweden control more than 40% of the wealth in Sweden. This is higher than the US. So there's a tiny, tiny minority, the richest 1% control more than 40% of the wealth. Then also, in, in 2004, uh, there was a study that showed that it, in Sweden, uh, Sweden has the highest CEO salaries in the whole of the EU. So CEOs are paid more in Sweden than they are in the UK, in Germany, France, wherever, right? And this is compared to almost a quarter of the population in Sweden who have no financial assets whatsoever. So almost a quarter of the population have absolutely no financial assets. So this just shows, I mean, I, you could say I've debunked the myths there already, but uh, <laughs> it's not as simple as that. Um, so, but this shows that this huge, obviously, inequality in Sweden. But then I'll just say a few things about when I grew up and some things that are true about what people say about, uh, about Sweden as well is that, I mean, I got a free cooked meal in school every day. Um, I got free health care, free medicine for everyone who's under 20. Uh, free third level education and automatic rights to grants and loans to pay for your rent. Um, and for your food and so on. And also, there's state-owned pharmacies with generic, cheap drugs and so on. So there are just a few of the things that are, or maybe I should say now was, uh, true. So, so then you have to kind of explain how you can have this huge inequality where 1% own more than 40% of the wealth, and you also have some, uh, some general kind of welfare, whatever things like education, healthcare and so on. And you have to look at history, to do this you have to look at history and the emergence of the welfare state and where it came from in the first place. So first, like, a lot of the mainstream commentators would kind of talk about, uh, especially in Sweden, maybe in other places as well, would kind of say that there's something, there's something genetically different about the Swedish people and the Swedish people just want to have harmony, Swedish people want to uh, have partnership and uh, we want to share and we want equality and all the things that, that is something genetically different that's always been there. Um, and then there are some mainstream commentators that would say that this kind of started in the late 1800s and that uh, with kind of industrialization that, and that there was some kind of nice sort of capitalists uh, who, who wanted to share things and that's when the welfare state started. And then there are some that say that it started in the 1930s, um, together with sort of uh, partnership that started in the 30s uh, between the unions and, um, and bosses and so on. And I would say that none of these things are actually, none of those things are true. And that in, it's true to kind of certain extent in the 30s that there was some sort of beginning of a welfare state, but it was a very sort of small reforms, minor reforms um, that took place in the 30s. So, so when did the welfare state really emerge um, in Sweden and Scandinavian countries? Well, Sweden had a very late sort of industrialization, kind of in the late 1800s really, that Sweden really industrialized. And it was mostly built on ex exports, uh, mostly iron ore uh, and forestry, so raw materials that were exported to industrialized countries like uh, Germany and uh, Britain to be used to make factories, machinery, uh, way more stuff. Um, and um, 
then uh, when in 1914 World War I broke out and uh, Sweden stayed neutral during the First World War and then also during the 